अज़ुबिल्लाजीम बसमीम अल्लाम डियर स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट ए न्यू कोर्स व्हिच इज जियोटेक्निकल इंजीनियरिंग वन लेक्चर नंबर वन वी विल फोकस ऑन द इंट्रोडक्शन टू जियोटेक्निकल इंजीनियरिंग एंड द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ जियोटेक इंजीनियरिंग first we will focus on the course aims then we will move towards the introduction to soil and soil mechanics then we will introduce the geotechnical engineering we will highlight the history of geotechnical engineering and the test required the importance and famous geotechnical failures and some typical two technical questions which will come up in your mind as well so starting with the course aims the aim or the first aim of this geotech 1 course is to introduce civil engineering students to soil mechanics the concepts of soil mechanics surface and subsurface soil formation of soil mineralogy what are the different types of minerals present in the soil what are the different types of classification systems basic physical and index properties of soil and what is the use of these properties in engineering for the engineering purposes the second aim would be enabling civil engineering students to solve fundamental problems related to permeability seepage compaction and vertical stresses the third aim would be to introduce civil engineering students to soil exploration or the site investigation and various field and laboratory test needed for soil exploration or site investigation now there will be three clos course learning objectives clo1 would be related to explaining the fundamental engineering concepts of soil behavior on basis of its physical properties index properties and modes of formation related taxonomy domain and program learning objectives are also given in this table in clo2 we will try to apply the concepts of soil classification and basic geotechnical properties then in clo3 we will analyze the effects of compaction seepage and vertical stresses on engineering behavior of soil starting with the basic concepts the, the tentative schedule weekly schedule is also given here in this table as i mentioned all in week 1 we will focus on the introduction part the importance the formation of soil transportation sorting and deposition then in week 2 we will focus on different types of soils soil fabrics clay minerals and how it affect the properties of the soil surface forces absorbed water and adsorbed water then we will move towards the particle size distribution sieve analysis hydrometer analysis different types of phase relationships and we will solve few examples and problems related to the phase phase relationships as well concept of relative density physical states and index properties of fine grain soils will be discussed unified soil classification system ashto soil classification system soil water or capillarity seepage Darcy's law 
determination of coefficient of permeability, measurements in lab and field, seepage theory, flow nets will be discussed in week number 7. We will also solve a few examples on it in week 8 and we will be having a midterm exam after studying the basic geotechnical engineering properties and all these topics such as particle size distribution, phase relationships, so classification, seepage and permeability topics we will have a midterm after all these. Then we will start with the moisture density relationships, standard and modified proctor tests, interpretation of those proctor test results, benefits of soil compaction, field compaction, compaction quality control, for example, different types of tests to perform the quality control, such as sand cone, balloon, and nuclear density meter tests. In week 12, we will focus on the stresses from elastic theory, point load test, line load test, strip area, carrying uniform pressure. We will solve a few examples on it as well. Strip area, carrying linearly increasing pressure, circular area, carrying uniform pressure, and we will also solve a few examples on it. Rectangular area, carrying uniform pressure, influence chart, for vertical stress and we will solve a few examples on this topic as well in week number 14. In week 16 and week 17 our focus will be on the importance of site investigation, what are the purpose for site investigation, phases of site investigation, soil exploration program, soils exploration methods, what are the different types of geophysical methods like the ground penetrating radar, what information we get from the GPRs, seismic surveys, electrical resistivity and others. Why we do trial pits, hand or power aggers, wash boring, rotary rigs, percussion rigs, soil identification in the field, what are the number and depths of borings required, soil sampling, groundwater conditions, soil lab tests, type of field or in situ test, for example, van shear test, standard penetration test, cone penetration test, pressure meter test, dilator meter test. So these are the topics which will be discussed in week number 17 and in week 18 we will be having final term exam. There will be two quizzes and two assignments so to create our course so therefore we will be having two quizzes and two assignments one midterm one final term exam you might take one presentation from the students on the topic of field compaction but let's see if we get a chance in our course to have this presentation, okay. Now let's start with the introduction to soil mechanics. Before introducing soil mechanics, it is important for engineering students to know about the soil. Now, the term soil in civil engineering is defined as the uncemented aggregate of mineral grains, which we usually get from weathering of rocks. And also decayed organic matter with liquid and gas in the empty spaces between the solid particles and these empty spaces 
you can call that at voids as well. Now if the products of weathering remain at their original location, they constitute residual soil. So if these particles stays at their original location, that would be known as residual soil. And if the products are transported and deposited in a different location, they will constitute a transported soil. And the agents of transportation being gravity, wind, water and glaciers. Now soil is used as a construction material in various engineering projects or geotechnical projects and it supports structural foundations which we will study in foundation engineering. So thus civil engineers must study the properties of the soil. Now what are the properties of the soil that is important such as its origin from where the soil came from, how it was deposited. What is the grain size distribution, whether the soil is fine grained, whether the soil is coarse grained, ability to drain water, seepage characteristics, compressibility characteristics or settlement characteristics, consolidation behavior, that is also important, shear strength of the soil and the bearing capacity or the load bearing capacity of the soil is also important. Now what is soil mechanics? Soil mechanics is the branch of science that deals with the study of the physical properties of the soil and the behavior of the soil mass subjected to various types of forces. For example, axial, lateral and dynamic forces. So soil might be subjected to axial loading, soil might be subjected to lateral loading and soil might be subjected to dynamic loading and there will be certain physical properties of the soil which we need to deal. Now in rock mechanics, it's a branch of science that deals with the study of physical properties of rock and the behavior of rock masses subjected to various types of forces like axial, lateral and dynamic and how these properties or how this behavior of the rock masses will occur and if we are dealing with the properties of rock and rock masses that is rock mechanics and dealing with the properties of soil and soil masses that is the soil mechanics. Some people they call soils engineering term as well and it's the application of the principle of soil mechanics to practical problems while rock engineering is the application of principles of rock mechanics to practical problems. Now what is geotechnical engineering then? Geotechnical engineering you can define somewhat like this that it is the sub-discipline of civil engineering that includes the application of principles of soil mechanics and rock mechanics to design foundations. So there are different types of foundations for example shallow foundations or deep foundations which we will study in the foundation engineering course which is available online as well. Retaining structures, there are different types of retaining structures. Lateral forces are acting onto the retaining wall due to the soil. Therefore, the knowledge or understanding or awareness about the soil lateral forces is also important in the field of geotechnical engineering. The design of foundations design of retaining structures and structures like slopes, embankments, design, etc. You can 
also call that in terms of geotechnical engineering structures. Now this is an excellent slide or figure which demonstrates several branches related to geotechnical engineering and their overlap and it gives an excellent idea that the knowledge uh, or the concept of geotechnical engineering how the understanding of geotechnical engineering is related with other fields in civil engineering or more broadly in engineering as you all know that there are different fields for example structural engineering transportation engineering construction engineering environmental engineering earthquake engineering hydraulic engineering and this is the mechanical engineering and geology so these are the subfields in engineering and most of them are related to civil engineering and you can clearly see the link are the concepts of geotechnical engineering let's let me give you an example for example if a structural engineer want to design a foundation or if he or she wants to study the soil structure interaction as you know that the foundations interact with the soil therefore the knowledge or understanding about the geotechnical engineering this is soil here and you can build a structure on top of this this is the superstructure and this is the sub structure so the knowledge about the foundation soil is important what is the shear strength of this soil and the settlement behavior of this soil and how this will act or how this axial load will be transferred or if wind is applied on it how the lateral load would be resisted by this soil and if there is an earthquake how this soil will behave during an earthquake so it's related to the earthquake engineering and if we are designing a tunnel or an embankment, so we are dealing with the transportation engineer. In construction engineering, if we are designing ground structures, excavation, soil improvements or earthworks, so the knowledge of geotechnical engineer is required. If we are designing earthen dams, scouring groundwater drainage, many geotechnics. So the knowledge of geotechnical engineering is required there as well. If you are dealing with the geological engineering, geomaterials and geohazards. So the knowledge from geotechnical engineer is also required. So it gives you a very good idea that if you choose to become a geotechnical engineer in every project of a structure i'm talking about a bigger project not a small project so the knowledge and understanding of a geotechnical engineer or the expertise of a geotechnical engineer can be used in various different projects in civil engineering and overall in the engineering field so i hope that you are enjoying my videos 
and if you want to know about the foundation engineering so you can visit to my youtube channel and you can watch different videos related to the foundation engineering there and you will also find out the case studies related to geotechnical engineering thank you very much assalamu alaikum and allah hafiz